What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have two areas of interest that have been tagged by the NHC, one off the coast of Florida, and another one off the coast of Central America in the southwestern Caribbean Sea, showing more and more signs of potential organization as the hours continue to go on. We'll go ahead and show you what's all, all going to be cooking in the next couple of days right here. We have two new areas of interest right here that we're going to go ahead and talk about. Here's the first one. This is just off off the coast of Florida, and this is right uh, just to the east of Miami right here. A non-tropical area of low pressure is expected to form near the southern Florida around a frontal boundary tomorrow. This system, uh, this system is then forecast, excuse me, to move quickly northeastward across the Bahamas and offshore the east coast of the U.S. through the weekend. Although development into a tropical cyclone appears unlikely, this system is expected to produce gusty winds and heavy rains across portions of the southern Florida, the Florida Keys, and the Bahamas during the next couple of days. For more information, check the high seas forecast by the NWS. If we go ahead and show you the satellite imagery right here, this is where a lot of the storms are right Right now, the center of circulation is about right here, according to what the NHC is forecasting at this current point in time. You're seeing a lot of thunderstorms really starting to fire up around much of Florida at this current point in time. We are seeing a lot of the more storms coming towards the Florida Keys and a lot more rotation happening potentially around the Bahamas over there. So that's what we have going on with the first area of interest that is near Florida. The second AOI right here, we the chances in the next seven days have come down a little bit. However, the chances of the next 48 hour, uh, hours have doubled pretty much. So here's the situation. Disorganized showers and thunderstorms persist in association with a trough of low pressure located to the southwestern Caribbean Sea. Environmental conditions appear marginally conducive for development of the system over the next couple of days, and a tropical depression could form by this weekend as the system is moving uh, northeastward across the western and central parts of the Caribbean Sea. An Air Force Reser Reserve Reconnaissance Mission is scheduled to investigate the system tomorrow, so we will get you that information as soon as that continues to come in because we really need this uh, recon to kind of give a better understanding of what the structure is like with the system, how strong it is, how pretty much how organized it is, because all we have right now is satellite imagery. We don't really have that much when it comes to like on the ground details at this current point in time, because this is over uh, off to sea and this is uh, near Central America over here. So that's what we have going on. We do start, we are still seeing some signs of organization at this current point, at least in the short term. Long term, I'm not really 100% sure how that's going on. But what I do know for a fact is based off this convection right now, Jamaica is already starting to see some impacts, especially near the western half of Jamaica right there in, in the mountainous areas as well. So we will need to definitely pay attention to it as time continues to progress over the next uh, few days. But in the meantime, regardless of development... The system is expected to continue to produce heavy rains that could result in flash flooding and mudslides over portions of the Caribbean coast of Central America and the Greater Antilles through this weekend. Interests in Jamaica, Cuba, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, the southeastern Bahamas, and the Turks and Caicos should continue to monitor the progress of this system. Formation chance in the next 48 hours is at 40%. In the next seven days, it is at 50%. So as of right now, we are still seeing uh, a lot of stuff potentially going on. And like uh, I've been reporting and like the NHC has just said, even if this thing doesn't really develop and this thing doesn't really take a crack at developing at this current point in time, it's still going to be producing some very heavy rainfall. It's still going to be producing some potentially life-threatening situations at this current point in time. And we have a lot of stuff to really kind of go over before we uh, kind of get into uh, more of the other stuff that we're looking at right here. We're going to go ahead and start by checking at the models at this current point in time. We'll then show you some of the conditions. Unfortunately, the OHC map that I do ha usually have pulled up is kind of out of commission at this current point in time, so I'm not really 100% sure when that's going to come back, but we will keep you updated on that. University of Miami really needs to get on top of that because we really need that data to kind of digest what's been going on. 
But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and start with the model runs. We're starting with the European model at this current point in time. The European is showing signs of organization and development, both with the low-pressure system off the coast of Florida and the tropical system near uh, Jamaica right there. And then it kind of starts to meander, makes a lot of impacts towards Jamaica. Then it brings a lot of heavy rainfall, particularly to Haiti and, so and southeastern Cuba right there. Some of the most mountainous parts of the greater Antilles right there definitely has a massive threat for flash flooding, mudslides, mud especially in the areas where a lot of the soil is a lot, a lot less built uh, together by trees and all that, less, a lot less rooted in all that. So that's definitely something to pay attention to. You have the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas seeing some impacts before the storm moves further out to the east. In the meantime, with this system right here that's off the coast, of, uh, that's off the coast of Florida, showing signs of organization and development, and then it likely becomes a low-pressure system around a mid-latitude cyclone, likely, and becomes eventually a nor'easter that could bring some impacts towards, Flo uh, not to Florida, but rather the New England over there, but before it does that, it's definitely going to be bringing some more thunderstorms to Florida, parts of Georgia, and potentially the Carolinas, as I've been taking a look at it uh, even further, so that's the situation we have going on with the European model, at least with the operational model. We also need to show you the shear and wind for and the moisture forecast to kind of get a better understanding of what why these things may be uh, kind of calling for the development it is. So here's the shear forecast, at least for the next 24 hours right here. The shear where this system is in the in, off the coast of Florida is extremely unfavorable. It's 50 to 60 plus knots wind shear at this current point in time. If we go ahead and show you the current wind shear, it's exceeding, uh, it's exceeding 80 knots in some areas right there, which is kind of interesting as to why the NHC is really tagging the AOI where it is at this current point in time, because there is really not very much favorable conditions for tropical development, especially when it comes to the wind shear. 80 knots of wind shear can tear any tropical system apart, so I'm not particularly that surprised that this has only a 10% chance of formation and development over here. But what I am surprised in is, is that how resilient this low-pressure system is anticipated to get to. And the wind shear across much of the Caribbean in the meantime is forecasted to weaken, especially as the system starts to move towards Jamaica and that area right there. And then you see kind of like this line of decreasing wind shear right there that kind of just rips itself apart as it gets through the Caribbean right there and there is a lot less wind shear to really look at for the Caribbean at least for the 19th through the 20th through the 21st and maybe in parts of the main development region as well which is pretty interesting to say the very least before the shear starts to kind of rebuild and kind of you know just basically shut off the season for the rest of the year so that's what we have going on with the shear forecast, at least in the Caribbean. When it comes to this system up here, the shear does weaken slightly. However, it's still going to be around 50 to 60 knots of wind shear. And maybe, and as this transitions into a mid-latitude cyclone, it's likely going to end up using some of that for its own advantage right there. So that's what we have going on with the shear forecast at this current point in time. The real key to this, though, is how much moisture there is in all of this. Because if there is less a lot of less weaker weaker wind shear and there's a lot uh, of dry air that's really not going to equate to much but if we show you the moisture there is a ton of moist air from Alabama all the way to Central America right there in this whole area. And where this system is expected to organize and hopefully not develop but it potentially does it's in an area of moist air right there. It's in an area of very moist air, and yes, it's in an area of weaker wind shear as well, which is particularly important when you go to about 24 hours. You still have that moist air pocket. There is some dry air that does intrude the northwestern Gulf of Mexico and potentially towards the system, and that may end up hurting some of the tropical development that is anticipated at this current point in time. However, based off what I'm seeing, by the time the dry air does get there, there's not going to be enough time, and the system already is moving through, impacting Cuba, impacting Haiti, impacting all these areas right there. And in the meantime, this, with the system in Florida, there is a massive amount of dry air intrusion right there, especially if the system does want to organize into a tropical system. It's going to have to battle all that dry air out, which, in my opinion, that's very unlikely going to happen. 
And that's why I'm not so concerned with this organizing into a tropical system. But what I am concerned about is this organizing into a mid-latitude cyclone that brings a lot of impacts towards the Carolinas, towards the mid-Atlantic, and towards New England over there, potentially a nor'easter where it brings some snowfall in the mountainous areas right there. That's a main concern I have right there. And as this thing starts to transition into a mid-latitude, then it all the dry air really just, you know, kind of just doesn't, uh, it just kind of fades away and kind of stays out of the system from there so that's the situation we have going on with the draw uh, with the air moisture forecast at this current point in time now we're going to go ahead and show you some of the uh, other models that we have pulled up we'll show you the gfs model to kind of give you a better understanding this is the zero z of the gfs Zero Z is showing signs of organization and development. Gets potentially gets up to tropical storm strength as it makes landfall in eastern Jamaica right there before uh, bringing lots of impacts towards Haiti and potentially Cuba. Like the rainfall rates that are anticipated in Haiti are rather disturbing in my opinion because it's an absolutely mountainous amount of terrain. They're gov they have no government pretty much and the infrastructure is absolutely crap right there. So we have this, and it also bleeds into Hispani uh, other parts of Hispaniola, such as the western half of the Dominican Republic, which is also a, a bit of a concern right there. And then it kind of moves out to sea. Meanwhile, this, with this system, it kind of organizes and develops into that nor'easter while moving quickly towards the mid-Atlantic and towards New England over there. So that's what we have going on with the GFS model. Next thing we're showing you is the CMC model over here. The CMC has been one of those models that has been pretty consistent when it comes to tropical development. And the CMC is forecasting a tropical storm to organize and develop. While missing Jamaica, it will bring lots of heavy rainfall to Haiti, to the Dominican Republic, potentially towards Cuba if it pushes a little bit further to the west. But this is, if the CMC model is correct, that would, in my opinion, be the nightmare scenario right there because of just how mountainous it is and just how poor Haiti's infrastructure is. And... Like I've said in many videos before, Haiti is the second poorest country in the United States behind Venezuela, so the infrastructure that you can already assume is not the best, like I've said before. And then it kind of dissipates as time continues to go on. And then as for this tropical system or non-tropical system, it kind of just moves past, quickly organizes and develops, and potentially becomes a nor'easter as it affects New England over there. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the icon model, kind of neatly wrap this up in a nice little bow. The icon model shows signs of organization and development strengthens up to a tropical storm as it does make landfall near Jamaica right there before bringing heavy, heavy rainfalls uh, once again to Cuba and Haiti and those areas right there. So this is a situation that we need to pay attention. This looks like to me that this is going to be a very big rainmaker right there and not so much of a windmaker. So the main concern I have with all of this is massive amounts of flash flooding. And this is all stuff that we're going to have to pay attention to as time continues to go on. And we will keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. But with that being said, we're closing the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out. It helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.